Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here and welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another review and I've been really excited about this review because uh, this class of locomotive truly is one of my favourites, uh, one of my all time favourites and it's a bullet Pacific uh, this one's the Merchant Navy class and as you can see it's in the BR Blue uh, which is the Canadian Pacific model uh, and uh, yeah here's the box uh, as you can see super detailed Hornby box and uh, I'm really glad to say actually that today I've got a double unboxing for you because I've had this one for quite a while I did unbox this one a couple of years ago um, but uh, you know I just think I can do a better job now so I thought I'd unbox them both for you and then I'll look at one of them in a little more detail so I suppose uh, we'd better take a look at the boxes very quickly uh, as you can see, it's a super detailed model, and uh, these are all loco drive uh, from the early 2000s, I think, but they really are quite modern. And uh, yeah, in fact, let me uh, move the blue one out of the way. I'll save the best one till last, and we'll get this uh, this green one unboxed to begin with. All right, so let's have a quick look at the end of the box then. As you can see, uh, you've got the well, the product code there, which is R double two o four. BR4623520, which is the running number, and then the name, which is Bibby Line, and Merchant Navy class, uh, which is, of course, the class of locomotive. So, uh, yeah, without any further ado, uh, let's get this uh, unboxed. Now, of course, there's no information on the box uh, of this model, uh, because Hornby didn't start doing that till later on, and I'm having a bit of trouble getting this open. There we are. Almost, almost. <laughs> there we go. Right. So... The information is actually included on the back of this sleeve, as you can see there. So if I, yeah, there's a little close-up of it. Uh, so if you want to pause it and read it, you can do. And it also tells you a little bit about the model, which is quite nice. And it says there and that it's a new generation of model for the new millennium. So yeah, early 2000s, I believe. Uh, so yeah, let's get the loco out then. Uh, well, I'll just uncover the tissue first so that you can see it. And then I'll start by getting the tender out. So yeah, here we go then. Now this is the first one I got, and I got this a couple of years ago, but it's, I've managed to keep it in absolutely mint condition. But there's the tender, BR Green tender, or Brunswick Green, uh, six wheel tender of course. Lovely looking thing, uh, is a bullet tender. But yep, there's that, I'll show you that a, a little bit later. Uh, now I've got to try and get this loco out. And these are a bit awkward because the smoke deflectors are, you know, very delicate. There we go, got it, just about. <laughs> So there you go, that's the Bibby Line one in the green, which is number 35020, and that's an 8P, which is a, a very powerful locomotive. And what a gorgeous model it is. Uh, so yeah, let me put that one to one side for a second then. Well, I'll put it on the ground here so that you can see it with the, uh, the tender hooked up to it. There we are. There you go, yep, yeah, so yeah, more on that later then, I'll just put it to one side for the time being, uh, while I unbox Canadian Pacific, of course, which is uh, my fantastic one. And as I say, these are a little bit more sought after, um, you know, you can get the green ones quite cheap, but these cost uh, more sort of towards £100 or so. Although I only paid, what did I pay, I paid I think 90 for this, which is pretty good because it's uh, unused, it's just been used in a display. So yep, yeah, let's have a quick look, I mean the box is exactly the same, so there's no point to, you know, dwindling on that. Uh, but we have got a different product code, of course, which is R2171, BR462, Canadian Pacific, Merchant Navy class. So basically, uh, pretty much the same thing. So yeah, let's get this one unboxed as well then. And uh, this one really is the cream of the crop. Uh, it's, a, it's a really, really beautiful, beautiful model. And uh, the first thing we've got, which I, for some reason, don't have any more for my other one, I'll have to try and dig it out, uh, is the detail pack. As you can see there, you've got some brake rigging, some piping, and some steps. And there's even a front coupling there if you wanted to fit it. Uh, but I haven't fitted any of that stuff. Uh, but of course, if you wanted to, that's something you definitely could. And again, we've got this sleeve, um, which has information on the class. So please, again, pause it if you'd like to read it. But if not, that's just fine. And uh, inside there, there you are. Let me get this out. Inside there, there is um, a little bit of, uh, well, what is it? The running and, sorry, the operating and maintenance instructions again. And uh, again, you've just got the regular diagrams really, where to oil, how to replace the motor. And uh, I think this was the days before DCC ready, just about. Uh, so there isn't anything about DCC stuff on there. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Then let's get the loco out. Let me move this sleeve. And just look at that, isn't it incredible? They really did know how to make a gorgeous model, didn't they, Hornby? Uh, I don't know why I said that in the past tense, who knows. Alright, here we go then. Let me get, uh, yep, tender first. If I can do it without breaking it. There we are. There we go. Gorgeous tender there. Uh, just like the other one, it's got the early emblem of the BR. 
on the side there, but yeah, striking livery, isn't it? Uh, there's something really special about BR Blue, I think. Uh, so yep, that's the tender. And I'll just try and get the loco out then, and it, it's not all that easy because the smoke deflectors do get in the way a bit. There we go. And I, I don't really like this packaging particularly because it's uh, a little bit cumbersome and it doesn't protect them as well as it could. But uh, yeah, I managed to get it out anyway. So there it is, the gorgeous Canadian Pacific locomotive. Uh, this one's running number 35005. And uh, really, what a beautiful model. Uh, as I say, there is something genuinely special about BR Blue. Uh, so yeah, there it is. And I think I'll review that one because it's got a little bit more detail on it uh, in terms of the uh, printed paintwork, but they're both just fantastic models. Uh, they really, really are. So there we are, there they are next to each other. And uh, time for a bit of a review then. Uh, but first of all, I will just give you a little bit of information about the class of locomotive. So the class first appeared in 1941, and they were actually Oliver Bullard's first class of Pacifics. And they were really unlike any locomotives that ever came before them, uh, because they initially ran on chain-driven valve gear, uh, which actually did have a few problems, uh, despite the advantages that it was supposed to bring. Uh, nonetheless, 30 of them were eventually produced during the remainder of the 1940s, and then during the BR period, uh, they were still in service, but the streamlining was removed, and the locomotives were rebuilt with the traditional Walshirts valve gear. Um, basically, as you can see on these models, really, uh, these are modeled from the BR period, as you can tell. Uh, interestingly, 11 of the class still exist today, uh, and one of those is Canadian Pacific, but sadly, Bibby Line was cut up along with the rest of the class, uh, probably during the 50s or 60s. And even though this is just a model, it really seems to me like it's a, a really impressive machine. Uh, so I suppose we'll look at the livery first, as you can tell, probably it's in the BR Blue livery. And as with most locomotives in BR Blue liveries, uh, it's got this gorgeous white lining, uh, which goes over the boiler, uh, which is fairly uh, normal, which looks absolutely fantastic. But then you've also got the lining along the frame of the locomotive, and it also spreads uh, around onto the valve chest, as you can see there, and uh, also onto the tender, but we'll get onto that later. Uh, so let's have a look at some of the other paintwork then. Let's go around to the side of the cab because that's super, super uh, intricate and detailed. First of all, you've got this sort of frosted glazing in the windows, uh, as you can see there, uh, which looks great. And also the gold paint around those uh, cab windows there, which looks really, really smart. And I don't remember really seeing that on many other locomotives. Uh, of course, the running number as well is really nicely printed. You've got the running number, you've got the 8P, the power classification above it there. And uh, what appears to be, uh, is it a warning sign there? No, it's just a triangle, isn't it? Uh, I forget what that's for, but I think someone has told me before. And again, that's all bordered with that double white lining too. Underneath there, there's loads and loads of separately painted pipework, as you can see, which looks absolutely fantastic. And the whole model has a lot of this pipework, as you can see. You've got a separately fitted whistle there, which is uh, about halfway down the boiler, I'd say. And then you've also got some safety valves there, which are sort of nestled into the top of the boiler. Uh, handrails, yeah, you've got plenty of those. Rivets all over the place, especially on the cab roof. And you've even got these tiny little printed warning signs on there, which you can see if I show you up close. Uh, it says danger, but I can't see what else. Uh, so yeah, danger something. Uh, on the front, you can see they've even put the running number on the front of the uh, smoke box, as you can see, 35005 and 84E, which is the shed code. The buffer beams are quite simple, there's not a lot of uh, rivets on them there, but the buffers are sprung, as you can see. There we are. And it's also worth looking at the wheel set, because they haven't got uh, traditional spoked wheels, they've got the bullet wheels, which are supposed to be lighter, but as you can see, they've got the little holes in them, and uh, that's very characteristic of most of uh, Bullitt's locomotives. Sadly, there's no cab detail on this model. Well, there is cab detail, but it isn't painted, unfortunately. Uh, but again, it's a very enclosed cab, so I don't think it's going to be something that you'll notice all that well. Uh, so, yep, yeah, that's the locomotive, uh, and a beautiful thing it is as well. I'll just show you the tender very quickly. As you can see, it's in the same livery with the early emblem there for British Railways, uh, which is very, very nicely applied. The tender also has similar glazed windows, as you can see there, and also quite a nice little coal bunker. Um, the coal does look a little bit like railroad coal, it's not terribly fine scale, and I'm fairly sure you can't remove it either, which might pose a problem if you wanted to replace it. Um, but, uh, you know, it's only a small complaint. Around the back, you've got quite a little bit of detail here. We've got some separately fitted ladders, as well as more of those warning signs, which are painted on, of course. And you've also got the same sprung buffers, and uh, also a removable coupling. Sadly, it isn't NEM, but it can be removed and replaced with another one if you want to. 
Uh, the undercarriage again is quite nicely detailed. You can see there's more of those bullied wheels there with the holes in them. And the whole thing is quite nicely riveted down there. So that's a brief look at the Merchant Navy class from Hornby. It's a terribly well detailed model. It really is absolutely beautiful. And uh, yeah, I don't think you get much better than this to be honest. Uh, in my opinion, of course. But yeah, that's that. Oh, I didn't show you the nameplate, did I? I better show you that. There it is, Canadian Pacific Merchant Navy class. A really nice touch, that. And uh, it is separately fitted, it appears. So yeah, a truly fantastically detailed model. And uh, I guess you're all really, really itching to see this one run. And uh, yeah, so am I. So let's uh, get it onto the track and get it hooked up to some coaches and see how she runs, shall we? So there she is then, a very, very handsome machine there, ready to run on the lines, and I will do just that in, well, just a second. Uh, but first I'll show you what she's going to be pulling. Uh, she's got a rake of Pullman coaches, seven of those, which she's about to back up to, and hopefully she'll look just amazing with those. On the middle line I've got Bibby, uh, the BR Green version of course, which is running number 35020, and she's pulling, again, seven coaches, but these are Maunsell coaches, I think they are anyway, but anyway, they're Southern Green coaches, and uh, again, that should be quite a nice rake for her. And on the very inner line, I've got a much older locomotive from the 1960s. This one is Fighter Command, and it's a Triang one. And as you can see, I've uh, now fitted it with a nameplate, which I uh, well, designed and printed out. And because these were mixed traffic locomotives, oh, by the way, it isn't, uh, it isn't a Merchant Navy. It is a West Country slash Battle of Britain, that one. Uh, just to point that out. But yeah, she's uh, got a rake of mixed freight, uh, including some wagons, some tankers, and also some little box vans at the back there, as well as a brake van. So hopefully that should look nice. But for the time being then, let's try the uh, Canadian Pacific 35005 and see how she runs. Now bear in mind uh, that this is quite an old model now. It's getting on for about, well, just over 10 years old. And uh, just look at this. A little bit of juice then. And she's right on a point. Look at that. This is not a modern locomotive. Well, it is modern, comparatively, but this is not, you know, I mean, this is far better, far better than some of the uh, brand new Hornby releases. Look at that, and you can't hear a thing. Again, the uh, wind turbine's on in the background, so that will be what you can hear, but hear that? Absolutely nothing. Totally silent marvellously smooth and this has been sat in a box for well you know over 10 years it's ridiculous really really impressive okay a bit more speed then let me couple up to those Pullman coaches for you <laughs> that was a bit of a crunch wasn't it hang on I'm not sure that it's coupled because some of these Pullman well yeah I think it's this coupling I had to glue one of the couplings on the Pullman coaches so um, the uh, coupling hook is uh, fairly rigid and fixed. But there it is. Well, there she is anyway. Let me just turn that up a little bit. There you go. And let me send her forwards. And uh, just look at this. Isn't that a gorgeous sight? Hopefully you can see why this is my favourite. Well, one of my favourite locomotives. And of course, you'll have to let me know which of the three is your favourite. Next up, we'll start the Bibby line. Maybe the Bibby line's more your cup of tea. I don't know. But either way, here we go. There should be a little poll, by the way, so you can let me know which one you like the most. Alright, and finally then, the Air Smoothed Battle of Britain slash West Country class. Fighter Command. Here she goes then. <laughs> Bit of a rough start, but she's got it. Alright, let's watch them run then, shall we? They're really good haulers, as you can see. Seven coaches isn't an awful amount, but there really is no no complaining at all. What a fantastic locomotive. I don't want to take any credit from Bibby Line either, because that's a beauty as well, but I personally think the BR Blue just about takes the biscuit. It <laughs> just about beats it, but I admit that it is very, very nice indeed. And of course, the classic Triang Oops, just stuttering on the points a little bit there. Um, Battle of Britain class, looking fantastic as well. Yeah, what a fantastic sight that is. Quite like it with the Pullmans actually, it looks good. 
And Bibi Line, no problem at all with her seven coaches either. Looks very good. So here's the ratings then, well my ratings anyway, for the Merchant Navy class. Detail 9 out of 10, it's virtually faultless detail except of course the cab isn't painted. And today that's sort of something you'd expect. Uh, performance 10 out of 10, perfectly smooth runners, they can pull absolutely loads and uh, they're completely silent as well. So absolutely faultless uh, in terms of performance. Again, in my opinion, character 10 out of 10, they're absolutely gorgeous machines, I really do think they are. And similarly, build quality 10 out of 10, I've, well, I've had one of them for a long time and nothing's broken off it and I've always felt very comfortable uh, moving it around and, uh, you know, it seems to be built very well. Value, I've said 9 out of 10, uh, I paid £90 for the blue one, which is a little bit pricey but it's still much cheaper than uh, a, you know, a brand new locomotive from Hornby today. And uh, as I say, you can get the green ones quite a bit cheaper, £70, so that's really a good, very good value purchase I think there, so 9 out of 10 there. Overall then, 10 out of 10, uh, this is just my opinion of course, but this is absolutely my cup of tea, and in my opinion they're basically faultless. So there you go then, I hope you agree, let me know if you do, and uh, yeah, I'll even run in for a bit. A real rich smell in the air from that triangle one, but uh, yep, yeah, there's nothing better than that. <laughs> very manly to have a burning smell in the air while you're running your toy trains. Okay then everybody, well that should just about do it for today. I really, really hope you've enjoyed seeing these. Um, as I say, they are my absolute favourites. Um, yep, 
If you did enjoy it, please feel free to leave a like or even a comment on the video because I do love it when you get in touch. And if you'd like to, you can also check out the Facebook or Twitter pages and they're at facebook.com forward slash samstrains or twitter.com forward slash samstrains. It would be lovely to see you on there, but for now, thank you once again for watching. Very much appreciated as always, and I will see you very soon. Cheers everybody.